possibly one hour together, fine. You can always progress because you can create on the spot rapport not known to man mind before if you achieve the communication with the person mm -hmm. to be attentive fully and see what's Thank necessary you. as opposed to what you want to do so what, what you're saying is let, let's make connections let's so just connect the, the dots and see the objective as okay. oneness before we pick up all these problems because i could pick thousand you could sure. pick thousands sure. we can all pick and go okay. on it but one thing it's to change all of this because we know it can be changed and we know the change has to come through us, each and everyone. We know this, but can we actually see it one day or investigate it more? That's my question Thank you to much. myself. Thank, Thank you. you. So um, here's a question to the panel, because this has come up now in different, in different forms. And even, the, even this point, which is that let's really connect to people rather than throwing facts at people. Actually, that's really what it's about when it comes to education. Are we, in, are we empowering, engaging, inspiring younger people to get on and enabling that, or are we just giving them information? So here's a question for the panel. It's the old chestnut, and so I want an extremely inspiring, good right, answer. the question on the information side, sorry. Is that an answer? Accumulating knowledge and information and then regurgitating. That's exactly the point. We're Is that what, yeah. That's only one way of learning, surely. Exactly. And we so, know now. And so, and so my question there's is... There's learning on your observation, there's learning on here and now. What do we do about it? I've never been to school, but I've learned here in three days. So, 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 so my question to the panel is this, how do we get beyond just pushing information to younger people? How do we use the capacity, whether it's school or people who've left school, to get on and do the things that will, 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 will be worth doing? Ed, the education question, bridging the generation gap and inspiring people. You start with me. Yeah, just very quickly, we run uh, building courses and we do lots of schools activities and um, we're based down in Brighton, so if you want to come down from Crawley, please uh, just give us a shout. But our, our, all of the educational activities we do are based around three things. We give people a very good theoretical basis of what they're doing because we believe it's very important for people to understand exactly how things fit together and to give them a framework to build upon. The second is that we give people real practical experience in whatever it is that they might be teaching and what the course is about. And the third thing, finally, is all based around visioning and that people then imagine how they can take what they've learned, the theory and the practice, and put it into their own lives and actually make something useful from it. So in response to your question of education, those are the three things that we work. We work with theory, practice and inspiration. Uh, I would firstly would be in favor of closing all the schools down. Uh, secondly, I'm one of those few people who is... Yeah, I, I'm not unhappy that the building schools for the future has been cancelled because it is a grotesque overuse of capital at the expense of everything else. And thirdly, I have a friend called Divya in India who has a project called Design for Change, which doesn't tell children one thing at all. It offers them one question. Is there one thing in your school that you can imagine improving to make it more ecologically uh, supportive of your lives? That's the sum total of that question is that. And she has 34,000 schools after two years taking part in 11 countries. And because she's not trying to tell them anything, she's saying, here's a question, come back to us with answers. And for half of those schools, the children have taken the initiative of doing the project rather than got permission for some of it. I thought that was the best uh, quote I've heard. Get the, seek forgiveness, not permission. It is the way forward. As I've said already, uh, we, we employ less and less people. And uh, our average age of people who work for us is now 53. And that really worries me. And we've been trying to start an apprenticeship scheme and I don't know what is wrong with us or the education system, but we cannot find apprentices. 40 years ago, 30 years ago, 20 years ago, we could find people who wanted to do practical work. Now, whether that's our education system, I don't know. We've got two other projects. One is, uh, it's really a bad boys project, but it's also uh, to try and make bikers more safer. I, I used to be a biker and, and uh, had a, a duke. <laughs> It's not another form of peer, it's all right. <laughs> it is actually a Ducati. If you, you know. uh, and uh, in order to help those boys who would fall and follow the police or are just dangerous, we started a, a project maintaining and repairing bikes and making as well a, a, cross, a, a trial bikes uh, track. That's been fantastically successful because it caught the right part of them. It is what they were interested in. And we've done the same with the building trade as well. Uh, that, unfortunately, has come to a halt because the educational money has run out. But uh, that's not really what we're talking about. Uh, so uh, somehow it's, 
I don't know how you do it because I'm not involved in education. But if you can catch the things that they really want to be involved in and get them involved in the practical side, an awful lot of us are just practical and, uh, and, and not academic. Academics are just people who are frightened of money, that's all that is, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm, as much as I really hate it, I am the institution and I agree with you completely, but then I have to also turn up and not tell them that I want to shut their school down. So they don't listen to me and I can be as dynamic and crazy as I want. I'm still Miss Honan. I'm just boring. They, they think I go home and read the Bible and tuck myself into bed every night and that's all I ever do. Um, but... So they won't listen. Oh, they will. They do. I mean, I'm. I'm yes, I'm, I mean, I'm belittling. I'm sure there there is an impact. But um, it's so useful just to have somebody come in, just to come in because it's fresh, it's new, and it's like you see, you know, they, they get regimented. They're so regimented that they switch off. Um, and we have times when you know the bells don't work, so they don't move. And I'm like, well, just just go on your own, you know, to the next lesson. But the bell hasn't gone yet, Miss. Um, and so just if somebody, any one of you, just go into a school. Great. Um, I think uh, we have to be a bit radical. Uh, I totally agree with John number one. Are you John number one? Uh, yes. Education is such a misnomer for what we do to kids. And we do do it to kids. And the problem is that in this country, we believe, we don't really believe in children. We just believe in, you know, boxing them up and then letting them loose at 16. Um, so really, the, the, the country should be led by younger people or people who are young, at least still in their heads and have the creative enthusiasm to do things differently. If things don't work, it is a sign of a sick society that you think you should still keep doing those things. So we are going to stop doing these things eventually. At some point, the planet will make us stop doing them or we'll run out of the resources to do them or we won't be able to breathe the air that allows us to do them anymore. So we better do them. We better change it now. That's obviously why everybody's here. But I think the um, understanding ecology is really important because what you're talking about is lifeblood and getting people into those stale institutions where they never see the light of day of an idea or a different way of doing things or something creative or somebody who's really passionate about what they do. And ecology is all about flows. It's about mixing it up. It's about in and out. It's about meeting different people. It's about exchanging ideas. And it's also about embedding that as well as part of your process. That's a priority that that's what you do. So yeah, schools go in there. I think that's a great idea. I would start by, by probably forgetting that children are children and teenagers are teenagers. There's something, it's something cultural. It's not something that belongs to human being. I've, I've seen so many other cultures where teenagers are not teenagers because that gap doesn't exist. So you grow up and you start taking responsibilities as, as you grow up. So there's something to rethink about, rethink about that. And schools are not going to change until we take more responsibility. So I think society and public spaces and uh, everyone here, and we have such a big, bigger responsibility to take. And, and I think we, we, we deserve... Now. Yeah, and it should be, I think it should be a collective, and it should be a collective punishment to those who ruin or block other people's projects. There has to be something that we say we, don't, we consider unacceptable for people to block or to, to stop if it's a school, if it's something I, I don't see. I, I see the child in you two being really upset with our, with our Hamlet Council. I mean, we all, it, it happens to everyone. So let's, let's take collective responsibility for not allowing that to happen. Um, is, is there any disagreement on how you live perception? How do you see it? Is that familiarity? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah,
and um, health and safety and all that stuff. How on earth do you get through it without, I mean, do you have an insider uh, working in a mold or? Let me just bring this guy in first and then anyone else with a comment that will fit into this one? Okay, come on. Sure. Sure. Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. I'm um, from New Zealand, Aotearoa, other side of the planet. Uh, and I came from New Zealand for a number of reasons, but one was to attend the Secret Garden Party. Uh, I'm a trustee of a similar community building event in, uh, in Auckland, in New Zealand. And I work for a council, and I'm a long-term planner. And I want to offer you some hope. I work for Waitakere City Council, an eco city council that was taken over by politicians and by senior staff to push forward for a long term future and sustainability in whatever concept you might have. So there is a potential and a possibility of your councils being able to serve that longer term vision. So I want to just give you that little gem. The second thing I just want to contribute is um, we talked about experiential learning and examples and uh, sharing with kind of what it had going on. One of the questions I'd like to ask is about the role of the Secret Garden Party in playing that role going forward into the future. My understanding is that your event has grown in size and in population. I think there are a number of things that could be done to continue to grow that sense of community for four days, which is a long period. Uh, we generally have events for only two days in New Zealand. Uh, th four days is a huge opportunity to take that next step forward in group and growth and development. One option I would suggest to you to kind of kick the ball rolling, but to ask the forum, the, uh, the group panelists, uh, materials for street signs for people to name where they are living. I would like to contribute that as a future opportunity for people to sense of, grow a sense of place in their short-term occupation of where they are. I would like to ask the panelists, what might be other things that could be done to take this event further in its community development and its examples of what could be done? Okay, so what's going to happen now is I know that there's lots of people who want more to speak. We've got five more minutes of the scheduled time. So what I'll do is I'll ask, I'll ask, I'll ask, um, I'll ask uh, John to answer this question, the panelists to share with us their practical suggestions for taking Secret Garden Party forward, specifically for the event itself, but also to help solve John's problem, as it were. And then I'll ask them one more thing to round the event off, which is... Um, something that keeps them inspired in doing this work across the many decades of bashing your head against planners and other people. So SGP suggestions and then their inspiration point. I'll then make a couple of final points and ask Ed to close off. Right, right thank you. Um, uh, to answer the gentleman with the beard who is now sober. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think I can answer that quite simply. I know we have all, or some of us, have been moaning on about regulators and bureaucrats and what have you. The first meeting we had, there were six people came to the meeting with me and Fred. And they were health and safety, environmental health, environment agency, the police, the planners, and someone else I've forgotten who. And when they went, I had a middle-aged rant and said, look at that, six cars, six journeys, six salaries, we're paying for it as tax, it's bloody disgraceful. And Fred looked at me and he said, Dad, I'm here, and I want to get over there, and I've got these hoops to jump through. Why do you need to make it any harder? <laughs> so that's the answer, is actually by just determination. And in fact, you're right, you mentioned success, Moshi, uh, uh, Misha, and, and 